With the digital world rapidly growing, humanity stands on the edge where the boundaries between biology and technology blur. In the coming decades, it's not just our physical capabilities that will extend, we will find ways to extend physical life here on Earth. By 2050, some futurists predict we will be able to load our consciousness into a cloud-based system, creating what many call a digital afterlife. But this raises profound questions. Would you actually be conscious in this digital realm? Would you remain self-aware or would what we think of as a soul simply be trapped inside a digital prison, a replica of life rather than life itself? The concept of digital consciousness is already captivating some of the most powerful people in the world. Tech visionaries, futurists and billionaires alike are fascinated by cybernetic immortality. The idea of achieving eternal life by replacing fragile biological components with durable non-biological systems, preserving the human mind indefinitely. But what does it really mean to upload your mind? Is your mind the same as your consciousness? And if a perfect digital copy of you existed, would it really be you or just a high-tech imitation? For two decades, tech companies have been quietly collecting vast amounts of personal data, building a digital shadow of who you are. Your search history, your photos, your interactions. Together, they form an extensive digital footprint, a version of you that may already know you better than you know yourself. Yet even this highly detailed map of your behavior is not the same as your lived subjective experience of here on Earth. It may represent aspects of you, but it cannot yet capture the inner narrative, the stream of awareness that makes up who you truly are. The challenge in creating this digital afterlife begins with the human brain, arguably science's greatest mystery. The brain is composed of roughly 86 billion neurons and trillions of ever-changing synaptic connections. It is a living dynamic network. To upload consciousness, we would need to replicate not only its structure, but also its activity and context, something our current technologies cannot achieve. Neuralink and other brain-computer interfaces represent the first steps towards this vision of cybernetic immortality, allowing a digital interface to communicate directly with the human brain. What once seemed like pure science fiction, a core theme of transhumanism is now moving into reality, evolving at an exponential pace. Death, of course, remains inevitable for us all. Yet a wave of new companies are developing technologies to preserve aspects of our identity after death. Amazon, Storyfile, Hereafter AI, Forever Identity, LifeNought, and similar projects are building platforms where avatars, voice recordings, and other digital traces create a form of digital continuity. These systems can stimulate conversation, interact with loved ones, and in some cases feel eerily alive. This emerging sector, often called death tech, is reshaping how we mourn, remember and relate to those who have passed. While death tech holds potential benefits such as easing grief, preserving family histories and creating dynamic archives of human experience, it also raises profound ethical questions. Who controls this data? How authentic are these digital echoes? Will they become comforting companions or uncanny simulations? The digital afterlife is not a simple utopia. It demands careful design, rigorous ethics, and a societal conversation about what it means to be human in the age of artificial immortality. 
Existing platforms already hint at this future. Hereafter AI trains chatbots to mimic loved ones, voices and stories. Storyfile creates interactive avatars from recorded footage, while Facebook's memorialization feature transforms a deceased person's profile into a digital shrine. These are only the first steps of this technology. Many researchers believe a day will come when such systems become fully interactive when consciousness, or at least its digital twin, can engage in real time with the living. Yet, for the true digital immortality to exist, we would need to replicate not just the data and memories of the brain, but its entire network of neurons and connections. Popular culture has long wrestled with these questions, from the lawnmower man and Tron to Ghost in the Shell, and the matrix these stories all circle the same mystery if we can digitize the brain can we digitize the soul can consciousness as we experience it survive in a silicon based life form the debate reaches beyond neuroscience and into metaphysics current science views the body as a collection of cells and biological systems but emerging studies suggest human DNA is actually a fractile antennae, tuned not to a single frequency, but to multiple bandwidths of information. Neurons and cellular structures function as biological antennae, hinting that information and consciousness extends beyond the physical body into what has been called the astral plane or Akashic records. If that is true, then no matter how perfect our digital replicas become, the essence of consciousness may remain beyond our reach, unless we fundamentally alter human biology itself. The coming digital afterlife is not just a technological challenge, it's a philosophical, ethical and spiritual one. As the boundary between human and machine dissolves, we must ask, Will these advances liberate us from death or simply create new forms of existence we do not yet understand? In the current widely accepted view of death in our modern world, it is often portrayed as an absolute end. When our physical body stops functioning, the, the brain seizes its electrical activity, neurons die, and with them, so does consciousness at least according to the materialistic perspective. This is the narrative most people are taught, that once the body dies, there is nothing beyond, no continuation of self, no after. But this explanation is increasingly being challenged, not only by spiritual traditions, but also by countless reports, testimonies and experiences that suggest something far greater is at work. Near-death experiences, memories of past lives, and unexplained phenomena all point to the possibility that death is not the final chapter, but merely a transition. Many ancient cultures and spiritual systems ranging from the Egyptian and Tibetan books of the dead to Hinduism and indigenous beliefs describe the afterlife as a journey where the soul transcends the material world and moves to another plane of existence. In these traditions, the soul is eternal, cycling through different lives and realms until reaching some form of liberation or unity with a higher source. This stands in stark contrast to the modern Western scientific view, which largely refuses to accept these possibilities, keeping its framework tightly bound to what can be measured and quantified in the physical plane. By doing so, science is limiting our understanding of the true nature of consciousness and reality itself. The deeper truth, according to many of these traditions and a growing body of evidence, is that when we die, our soul and consciousness continue on. This means that an afterlife already exists. It is a natural part of our existence, not something we need to artificially create. 
in this light, the idea of a digital afterlife, the attempt to upload human minds and memories into machines seems less like a liberation and more like an imprisonment. Such technology could trap fragments of consciousness or personality within a manufactured limited environment, one still bound to the physical world. Instead of freeing us from death, it might imprison us in a synthetic copy of life, separated from the true journey of the soul. Tech companies promoting the vision of digital immortality often believe they are pushing the boundaries of human progress, yet may be venturing into forces far greater than they could ever comprehend. Forces that are spiritual, metaphysical and deeply intertwined with the mystery of life and death. The coming digital afterlife is not just a technological experiment, it is a profound philosophical, ethical and spiritual question. As the line between human and machines begins to blur, we must ask ourselves, are we creating tools that will expand our freedom or building new prisons for our consciousness? Are we embracing a higher form of existence or stepping into someone else's artificial matrix? Thank you for watching everyone and please subscribe if you haven't. You can also join the members section where we have additional content. See you in the next video.